Hi everybody, just wanted to make a quick video here to show a little project that I've done recently that was a lot of fun to do and pretty rewarding and the end result is what I think pretty cool although not easy to reproduce but what I've got here is a set of Fat Shark goggles that are actually not Fat Shark goggles at all. These are what I've been calling my glyph sharks. And what these are is an amalgamation of fat shark shell with Avagant glyph goggles, which I completely disassembled, took the optics out of, and installed into these fat shark shells, or shell. So I originally started out by buying a faceplate and taking the glyph apart and seeing if I could take the optics module and put it against the faceplate and see if it would made up. It really didn't come too close, so what I ended up doing was buying the entire Fat Shark shell uh, off of eBay for around $50. It's pretty expensive for a couple of pieces of plastic, but I really wanted to see if I could make this work, so I decided to give it a try. And then I'll flash some pictures on the screen to show the process that I used of taking apart the uh, Avagant Glyph goggles and making the Fat Shark shell fit around the optics module. And so, let me talk about some of the reasons why I did this. Well, first of all, uh, the Fat Shark goggles have pretty poor resolution. I fly with the Conix ProSight system, which is HD 720p, and the Fat Shark goggles don't have the resolution to support that. 720p is 1280 by 720, I believe, and the Fat Shark goggles in 16, 16 by 9 format, like the Fat Shark Dominator 3s, are I think 800 by 480. So you lose something when you watch the ProSight system through your average Fat Shark goggles. You're not seeing the full experience that the ProSight system has to offer. Secondly, the Avagon Glyph, while it does provide a very good image, has a few drawbacks. It has those big earmuffs, as you probably know, which are not ideal for an FBV flyer. You really would like to have a head strap kind of thing like this. And that is the nice thing about the Fat Shark goggles, is the form factor is wonderful. They're very comfortable with the faceplate here, with the foam. They sit on your face, they have a little fan, pumps air into the eye cup area, which keeps the fog away. They're pretty immersive because the light leakage is minimal. So the overall concept of the Fat Shark goggle is, is perfect for FPV, while the Avagon Glyph offers the image quality that you want for the ProSight for FPV. So I decided to make a system where I had the form factor of the Fat Shark goggles, but I had the image quality of the Avagon Glyph. So as I started to disassemble the Avagon Glyph, I started to realize how complex the Avagon Glyph is compared to a pair of Fat Shark goggles. If you pull apart a pair of Fat Shark goggles, the, ch the shell is in two halves, essentially. The faceplate pops off, the shell is in two halves, and inside you have a pretty simple assembly, really. You've got a couple of circuit boards and you've got a couple of optics modules, but the overall construction is very simple. The Avagon Glyph, on the other hand, has 10, 20, 30 micro tiny screws holding 50 different pieces together between the eye cups and the optics module and it's incredibly complex. So I got a little bit nervous as I started pulling apart the Avagon Glyph because of course they, they're not cheap either and I wasn't sure if the project was going to work but once I forced them apart because they're almost impossible to figure out how to get apart I don't think they're designed ever to be taken apart by someone who doesn't know how they're built in the first place uh, I had to really struggle to get the back, the black band that runs around the back off so that I could reveal just the optics module by itself. But eventually I ended up getting in there with some clippers and literally clipping off the, the plastic standoffs that are holding or securing that, that black band around the front there so I could isolate the optics module. And then I realized that there are a lot of very fine wires that are very, very thin. There is something like 50, 50 micro wires that go from the ear cups to the optics module because the circuit board driver for the optics module is actually in the ear cups. 
and the battery is in the battery is in one side and the, the main circuit board is in the other side. So those wires were clearly not designed to be moved around a lot. And so I had to figure out a way to manage that so that I could get them all self-contained in, inside the shell so they wouldn't get damaged or, or flexed around. The, the battery was actually the only wire that was really kind of robust and I was able to basically keep the, the stock battery, put it in shrink wrap, put a little wire wrap thing around it and a little grommet to go, in, to go into, the, into the side of the goggles here. But this is the stock Glyph battery. It still charges off of the stock USB port here. So the end result is good. I don't need a lot of the glyph functions, so I didn't need to keep a lot of the buttons that were on the earmuffs. In fact, I've eliminated pretty much everything. The only thing that I really needed to have was a power switch to turn it on, and it's a three position switch so it can be pushed all the way up to the top, similar to the stock Avagon glyph switch to determine the level of battery. So if I turn it on, the LED will glow, just like the stock setup. And if I push the switch up, it'll show the locate the, the charge level of the battery, in, in which case green in this case, so I'm good. And then switch back down for off. That's the HDMI port there. And to mitigate some of the issues that some people have with the, the HDMI port flexing, what I've done is I've created a little strain relief here, which I think everybody should do, even if you're still using the Avagon Glyph. But basically it's a little strain relief so that I can move this wire around and it doesn't put strain on the HDMI connector. Because HDMI connectors, are pretty sure they're not designed to be flexed around many, many hundreds of times the way we would do if we're running FPV, constantly connecting it, disconnecting it, it's hanging off of our head and our head's moving around and such. So that's why I, I provided the, uh, the strain relief there. So the optics module did not fit perfectly inside the case. And that's why you see I've sort of added a piece here. And I, I don't do body work. Like I, I don't know, maybe somebody, some people have uh, experience doing some, some car body work. It would probably come in handy here with some Bondo and such. I tried to fill it in the best I could using plastics fillers and th stuff that I found in the, uh, in the hobby store. But um, I didn't spend a ton of time on that. But what I did do is basically I cut a big hole in the top here so that I could fit the optics module I added extenders onto the IPD adjustments. I had to rebuild the way the fan attaches to the faceplate completely, but the fan still works, and I can use a, a small 2S battery that just, I'll just sit it in here. I have a little 2S battery that just sits in here and plugs into the balance port, just like the original Fat Shark. So the fan does work, and it does still push air down through the original vents here on either side into the eye area. And, but, because of the height of the optics module, I had to make basically an extender that, that's extended out of the top of the shell. And I, I used a piece of, uh, I, used, I used a bunch of pieces of styrene plastic to uh, basically make a new top for this piece as well as to add a part to this, to this door here. Behind here is where the original circuit board fits. And I'll show some pictures of that as well. But the original circuit board sits there the original switch, would have been, which would have been over here, was bypassed, and this switch was used instead. But the original HDMI port and USB port still remain. So it ended up coming out pretty well. If I were to do it again, I would do it the same. I would do it the same way. Although I really, what what I really wish I could do is create a three D printed version of this, the the, the face the Fat Shark faceplate attached to a completely three D printed shell would be really slick but I just don't have the time to design this all in CAD. It would be a lot of work to do that. There aren't a lot of straight angles here. Everything is curved and it has to fit on your face and be comfortable and lightweight. So it would not be trivial to make a 3D printed solution, I don't think. I'm a mechanical engineer for a living and I do a lot of CAD modeling and to, I feel like to do this correctly, to do this right with a 3D printed solution would be fairly challenging just from a CAD modeling perspective. It would probably take a few iterations to get it right. So. Anyway, I just wanted to show you guys the final product. It works beautifully, and I can now listen to my quad flying around as I used to without the big earmuffs, and I have the 720, 720p glyph screens right there for my viewing pleasure. I'm extremely happy with the end result, and I'm considering building another one, but the cost of doing so is a little bit steep. You do need a pair of Avagon glyph goggles, you do need a fat shark shell, which is about $50. Face plates, $25. Uh, I 
think the fan came with the faceplate. Yes, the fan came with the faceplate. You need to buy a head strap separately as well. So the cost, the cost really does add up here. Uh, so this is a very sort of niche product here that I've created, which is not easy to reproduce, but I think is a, is a wonderful end result. Um, so if anybody has any ideas on ways to improve uh, what I've done here, you know, shoot me a line. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things I could have done differently. Uh, the decisions I made along the way partly were due to smart thinking. Some of them were due to time constraints and materials constraints and having, and having it be the first time through the process of creating a new, a new thing like this. So give me a shout, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and uh, subscribe to my channel if you will. Thanks a lot, happy flying.